As you look at the response from central banks, the dot plot outlining three rate hikes from the Fed in 2022, and we weigh up the implications of Omicron, how do you layer on what we know about this variant to how it changes or not the response from central banks, notably the Fed? It's been, it's been I think, well, we've had an interesting 24 hours. Obviously, as you've pointed out, the news has been on the positive side when it comes to Omicron. I think the, the question that we've had within markets really for the last few weeks is that transmissibility versus how severe the virus is uh, or this, this uh, variant is going to be. And it looks like the severity is, is coming down. Is it coming down mm -hmm. enough? to offset the, the, the in increased transmission of it. I think there's still a lot of questions to be answered on that. And we should be getting more information as the days go past, particularly here from, from the UK. But I think this is this is so far been good news from a central bank standpoint. But I actually think central banks made a fairly strong statement last week where they had probably the ability to push some of these decisions into 2022, given the uncertainty around Omicron and what it actually means. And they chose not to. And you consider the Bank of England hiking interest rates, the Federal Reserve speeding up the tapering process and, and indicating that they expect three hikes next year. So for, this sort of verifies, I think, what the central bankers were thinking is that when they look out from a longer term uh, perspective, they're still more concerned with the pickup in inflation and how it hasn't been as transitory as they'd expected earlier in the year. And that really seems to be their main focus at the moment to say the, the news in the last 24 hours is probably more positive to that decision. So, so prescient calls arguably for the central banks then as they look through the Omicron risks and you talked about inflation it came through on the Bloomberg survey as the number one risk for our survey participants for 2022. You have a base case that we're going to see this is the 80 percent base case you're going to see trend growth for 2022 there's a five percent risk of a recession there's a five percent risk of subpar growth just unpack that view for us in so so our base case is actually 80 percent for above trend growth we still think it's a very buoyant environment we still see even though the central banks are starting the process of taking away some of the extremely accommodative policy financial conditions are still exceptionally loose at the moment that's very that should be continuing some positive for risk markets uh, we know we had a, a little bit of a wobble in um, the build back better uh, plan earlier this week but we do expect something to pass from the us which means there will continue to be fiscal support and the consumer and the corporations around the world to us look extremely healthy at the moment so we do see a good environment from a growth standpoint um, I think inflation is probably one of the uh, one of the areas that is definitely a concern. You know, we are also concerned. Look, inflation is going to come back down over the coming year. The question is just how much. Uh, the Federal Reserve said 2.7 percent. So, you know, that's at the higher end of of people's expectations. I think if we do go on that trajectory, though, markets will become quite comfortable with that move. Which parts of the economy, which parts of the corporate space are most sensitive to to what many would argue is now a paradigm shift from central banks? I think it's, it's, the, it's the part of the economy that rely on, on low interest rates. So as you get uh, rates moving higher, um, some, of the, some of the financing costs could become a concern. But actually, when you think about what these companies have done over the last few years, they have been terming out debt. They've been borrowing at very low rates for as long as they possibly can. We've seen real extensions in duration of corporate bond indices. So that's very, very supportive and they're sitting on a lot of cash at the moment they've built up these big cash buffers so all in all we just see corporates being in a really good spot that even if you do see rates go from the zero lower bound up towards one percent from the federal reserve or, or from the bank of england it shouldn't be a really big hindrance from a corporation standpoint it really is probably more as we would get towards the two two and a half percent and some of these corporations then needing to refinance that you might start to, to take a look at it but actually, that's still some way off. I say financial conditions still extremely loose at the moment. How much and to what extent do you want to be dialing back risk within the fixed income space as you look to 2022? Are, all, are you still comfortable being in high yield, in the junk space to get that yield? I think you are, because as I said earlier, corporate health looks particularly good to us at the moment. You're still getting, if you think about the U.S. high yield market today, you're still getting a spread. So the difference between the yield you get on high yield and the risk free rate, the government bond rate of north of three percent. And our expectation is that when we look forward, we're going to still see a very low level 
of defaults below 1%. We're currently at the moment at the lowest on record ever. And if that's the case, then actually you are still being compensated to sort of take these credit risks at the moment. I think where the big concern from a fixed income standpoint <clears throat> is going to be next year will be your duration component, because we're still in a very low yield environment. We've still got 10 year US Treasury yields sub one and a half percent. And the Federal Reserve have told us they want to be raising rates three times over the next couple of years or both both the next two years, which would put the cash rate around about that sort of level, which means we really expect Treasury yields to move higher. I think it will be quite an interesting environment, because if I look back at the, the Bloomberg indices, the US aggregate, the global aggregate index, they very, they very rarely have negative years. And both of them have never had two negative years in a row. This could be the time when we see that. They're both negative currently to the tune of one and a half or one percent this year. It could well be that we have negative returns again next year, which means you want a more active, dynamic duration man man management and to be a bit more flexible within your fixed income allocation as we look into next year. Ian, what's your regional bias for next year? So I still think you need to be having playing the US market from the short side. I still feel that it's going to be Treasury yields that move higher, particularly higher than where, than what we would expect within European markets, as we wouldn't expect the European Central Bank to be able to raise rates anywhere near to the same extent. And then I think emerging markets from a regional standpoint look really interesting. And emerging markets are a really tricky one at the moment. They've obviously had a pretty tough year uh, over the course of 2021. And when we, if we, we're sitting here in 12 months' time, I think we're going to be saying it's obvious they are either going to be the top performing asset mm. within fixed income or they're going to be the worst. And, and at the time, it will be obvious because they'll be the best performing because the valuations are so cheap and they look really attractive compared to other parts okay. of the market. Or they could easily be the worst performing because this is an environment where central banks are taking liquidity. Yeah.